Welcome to Kids Lightning. I'm Jared and this is Peyton. And today we're going to teach you how to play Hughes and Cues. Hughes and Cues is a really fun party game for up to 10 players from designer Scott Brady and The Op, who helped sponsor this video. In Hughes and Cues, players take turns doing their best to describe a color using one and two word clues. While the other players try to get as close as they can to that color on this giant color board, I still think it looks like a dance floor. The game includes 10 sets of party hats, three of each color, the scoring frame, color cards, and the board. To set up the game, lay out the board, then put the cards face down to form the draw pile. Then let everyone pick their party hat colors. You can put the scoring frame to the side for now. Put one piece from each player to the left of the scoring track, which is the gray area at the top of the board. Each of the cards have four color squares with the code that matches up with the spot on the board. The board has letters down the side and numbers across the top, and works kind of like a giant battleship board. Like, this red square is C14. So when you find that spot on the board, it matches up with the color on the card. During their turn, the cue giver will pick one color from the card and give a one word, then a two word cue to the other players. And the goal is to get them as close to that color square as possible, and hopefully someone lands on the square. The cue can be anything other than a common color name. So it can't be green or blue or red, but it can be an extract color like gold or lavender. You also can't give a clue about the color's position on the board. Also, you can't refer to a specific object in the room, like Peyton's shirt or the fridge. Peyton is going to be the first cue giver, so he's going to draw a card, pick a color without showing anybody else, and give a one word cue. Don't look back. My color is the red color, C11. My first cue is cherry. Now players go clockwise around the table, starting with the person to the left of the cue giver, which is me and they place their first party hat on the square they think the cue giver is describing. Once a square is taken, no other player can put their piece on that square. After everyone has made their first guess, the cue giver can give another cue, this time using either one or two words, but with the same rules as before. They can also choose not to give a second cue. My second cue is stop sign. Then the players make a second guess, this time going counterclockwise, starting with the player to the right of the cue giver. So the player who guessed last on the first guess gets to guess first on the last guess. After all the guesses have been made, it's time to score. When you assemble your scoring frame, make sure the twos are facing in and the ones are facing out. The cue giver takes a scoring frame and puts it on the board with their color in the exact middle of the frame. The square I picked was C11. If a player picked the spot exactly right, they get three points. Any player who's inside the frame but not on the exact spot gets two points. And anyone who's outside the frame but touching it gets one point. And this includes the corner spots. And I get one point for each piece that's inside the frame. After everyone counts their points, they move their pieces on the scoring track. Then players go clockwise around the table, taking turns as the cue giver. For three to six players, the game ends when everyone has been the cue giver twice. For seven or more players, each player gets to be the cue giver once. If you're having fun, just keep playing. The person with the most points at the end of the game wins. And that's Hughes and Cues. If you have any questions or if you have a game you want us to teach, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Bye. Bye.